So we're going to jump back into Richard Morgan Casey's evidence to the Post Office Horizon IT inquiry and he's, we start to discuss Lee Castleton's case and he's going through his statement and he's firmly disagreeing with the definition of what a Horizon document is. He makes a suggestion that, well, we can sidestep Horizon and just work out what stock and cash is there, what's been sent to the Post Office and what he started off with. And we won't even need to reference Horizon. However, it quickly becomes clear that some of the things that he's saying have been produced by Mr. Castleton have actually had to be signed off by Mr. Castleton, but would have to be obtained from the Horizon system. But his position on this is that once Lee Castleton signed it, it no longer became a Horizon document and it was all of a sudden his own document, just as if he had produced it from scratch. He also went us into a very firm debate with Jason Beer KC that suggests that, well, he signed it off, it was true and accurate, but Jason Beer puts to him at the same time he was contacting the helplines to say these documents aren't accurate because the figures that Horizon's producing are incorrect. Let's jump into the inquiry. Can we turn to the Lee Carlton case? Of course. Can we turn up paragraph... Sorry, I should also say that, as far as I'm aware, I've provided no documents to the inquiry. No, I... Because I, I didn't have any. No, I So, insofar agree. as that question suggested that I had provided documents to the inquiry, it's based on a false premise. No, it was based on the correct premise that you've given no documents to the inquiry. Okay. That's why we're working with... Justice. So, it's just the documents that my instructing, former instructing solicitors have provided. Correct. Things are getting a little bit touchy here, isn't he? He's not happy about being asked questions. But to be fair to Jason Beer, everything he's thrown at him, and they have gone back and listened to the, cause he, uh, the, the point he said, go back and listen to the transcript, you've asked about this. And I thought, well, he did mention the word criminal, but actually he did restrict it to the question of the civil cases in regards to the witness expert report. And now he seems to be getting touchy about the use of instructing solicitors rather than former instructing solicitors but actually there it's easy to see how such a mistake's made because Richard Morgan made it but now to be saying well I didn't provide you with any documents well great well that doesn't necessarily help you that could hinder you hence why he said he's working with what has been given by his former instructing solicitors but you can see the temperature is rising in the inquiry room between them now can we turn to paragraph 25 of your witness statement on page 7, please? Yes. And if we just read paragraph 25 um, together, you say, um, nevertheless, at a very high level, the issue in the case, this is the Castle case, was whether there was a discrepancy of around £25,000 between, first, the cash and stock Mr Carlston held at the end of the period when taken together with the cash sent back to the post office and all other receipts received from the post office from the branch. And secondly, the cash and stock Mr. Carlston was given at the start, together with the cash and stock that he received whilst trading. If those cash and stock numbers could be established by reference to primary documents, then it was possible to prove what the correct figure before the closing balance should be forensically, without reference to the horizon system, and hence whether there was a real as opposed to illusory um, discrepancy. And if it was that easy to do in his case, A, why didn't they get it right in his case? But B, why didn't they check that in all the other cases? Even if they thought Horizon was robust, when they're being told that there's problems with Horizon, that would be a way to prove your case. However, if the money, as we know, doesn't exist, then that will actually prove that it doesn't exist and there is no problem and the problem lies with Horizon. So maybe there's a bit of a conflict of interest there. Uh, just um, taking some parts of that um, in the second line, um, cash and stock Mr Castleton held at the end of the period. Was it your belief that um, evidence could be um, ascertained of those figures by counting and by documents other than documents produced by Horizon? Yes. Uh, reading on, when taken together with the cash sent back to the post office and all other receipts received from the post office, by the post office from the branch. Again, was it your belief that those facts and matters could be established by counting or by documents other than documents produced by Horizon? Or does that in part depend on documents generated by Horizon?
My Surely the post office must have had a separate system to Horizon for receipting money in and allocating that to branches. Surely they weren't using Horizon at Post Office HQ. So, and even if they were, presumably, I would guess if you're sending a lot of cash through what is presumably some kind of security company, I would imagine. Right, or it could have been something internal to post office, but I thought kind of security car and companies like that, you know, cash management companies, cash transport companies used to deal with this. They'd have to have separate paperwork to Horizon, wouldn't they, to show the amount of cash, where they've got it from and where they're taking it to. So you would have thought that was a possibility. My difficulty at this um, remove in time is that I can't remember the format of the documents. Um, and I think also there may be a, a mismatch between the way the question is asked and, and the documents that we're referring to. There were documents that were printouts and those documents were vouched by Mr. Castleton on a regular basis, either daily or weekly. I am unclear in my own mind whether those were documents produced by Horizon that Mr. Castleton then verified, or whether they were documents produced by Mr. Castleton that Mr. Castleton then signed off on. That's an important, a very important distinction, given the legal case that you were to run at trial. I'm not sure that it was because a verification of a statement of account by an agent <coughs> carries the same implication as the document actually being produced by the agent. Yeah, but if surely if the document's being produced by a system which is buggy, then the underlying document could be wrong, which, you know, could be, I guess, check. Uh, picked up in verification but if you're starting off with a faulty premise th there is a difference between I think a sub postmaster creating their own document and having to rely on a document produced by a third party system verification or not or at least that would would have been my submission I suspect at trial reading on under the uh, second part of the sentence Roman numeral 2 the cash and stock that Mr. Carlsetton was given at the start, as far as you can remember, was that a matter that could be ascertained without reference to the data produced by the Horizon system? Yes, I think so, because I think, and it's, it's something that I've, I've picked up rereading the transcript, I think there was a form P242 or something like that that, that was signed by the outgoing and the incoming sub-postmasters at the changeover of the accounting periods. Exactly, and then completing the rest of Roman uh, numeral two, together with the cash and stock that he received whilst trading, uh, that would have depended in part on records generated by Horizon, wouldn't it? Well, that goes back to the point about whether... What you can remember. Yes, and whether it was a record generated by Mr. Carsten or generated by Horizon that he then verified. I mean, there might have been additional documents. It's hard to believe that a fundamental system in the post office, and by all means, please, sub-postmasters, please let me know in the comments below if I've got any misunderstanding of this, because it is not my area of expertise. However, for example, the transactions are going through Horizon. So it's possible then, if there's these kind of delivery notes for cash and stock being delivered, it's possible, I guess, that they aren't generated by Horizon because that's before it gets to the post office, and that might be able to be ascertained. It's possible to go in, and I'm guessing when they're referring to the end period, it's possible to go in and count everything that's still there manually. However, the day-to-day -day transactions of the post office are going through Horizon, so if there's a problem with Horizon, then those records are potentially faulty. There's no separate, conclusive record at this time, as far as I'm aware, relating to every single transaction and every single stock movement and every single issuing and damaged stock and all and refunds and all these things other than the horizon system hence why there was the suggestion could a separate paper record not be kept i mean if we cast our mind back to elaine cotton's testimony in the case of julie wollstonehome she actually suggested she started keeping a manual paper record when she thought horizon was going wrong a, not sure how feasible that was, and B, you know, you'd have to get your crystal ball out to work out when Horizon's going to mess up. But to suggest that you can get all that evidence 
from out without any involvement of, of Horizon is is surely surely not correct. I would suggest because Horizon is so deeply integrated in the day to day operations of the post offices at this point. You carry on um, if those cash and stock numbers could be established by reference to primary documents. Uh, Sitting here now, can you remember whether those cash and stock numbers could all be established by reference to primary documents, i.e. other than documents produced by Horizon? So, again, we're going to differ about what a document produced by Horizon is. Um, How can you disagree on that? It either gets spat out of Horizon or it doesn't. If Mr Castleton has signed off on a document and said this is what had happened, then I would call that Mr Castleton's document rather than Horizon's document. There's also a problem that, in my own mind, I have this period of two to three weeks prior to the trial where I had volumes and volumes of documents that I went through and reconciled painfully by myself but I can't remember what the documents were, only that I did undertake the exercise. I'm not so sure I agree with him here. Well, I don't agree with him. You know, maybe he is right, but I don't agree with him. What he might be trying to suggest is that he gave the same legal weight into a document produced by Lee Castleton as he would do to one signed off by him. But the fact that if there's one signed off by him, which was originally a Horizon document, it doesn't magically become his document. He might have to sign it off, but that document is produced by Horizon without input from the sub-postmaster other than their daily usage of it. It's not like a spreadsheet they're updating, is it? Or like the paper records that they previously kept. It's a Horizon-produced document. Of course it is. If it's come from Horizon, it's Horizon-produced whether someone signed it off, not signed it off, made it into a paper aeroplane, it's still come from Horizon. And in, in my own mind, those are what I would call primary documents. So they were documents on which there was a manuscript verification by Mr Castleton saying that effectively these figures are true. You say um, words to that effect in paragraph 26, if we just continue reading. Yeah, sure. I think that some of the primary documentation prepared by Mr Castleton must have been provided um, to me at some point early on. And I noticed that he signed off on daily and or weekly figures. Um, I can't remember exactly what documentation was produced. I only have some recollection that there was a body of accounting documentation and there were some manuscript documents. It therefore seemed to me that the deficiency could be proved by simply adding up all the manuscript figures produced and the calculations signed off by Mr Castleton and without reference to any records produced only by a computer. Well, <laughs> signed off or not, if it's a Horizon report, it is a document produced only by a computer. You might be saying it's signed off by somebody else, but the computer has produced it and is the only producer of it. Uh, are you um, there saying that there was a manuscript record for each transaction, effectively a, a handwritten mirror or shadow of what was on Horizon? No. And if I've given that impression, I'm sorry. I mean, I would really be interested to see these original documents, because he can't remember them, we've not seen them so far. But the suggestion that Horizon's not involved, but it actually definitely is, you know, needs looking up completely because you know he's saying there well if it's been signed off well we need to see those signed off documents then don't we we need we need to see those because he can't remember them and we've not seen them 